we dive into the materials, um, I thought what I would do is actually tell you the story about how I ended up on the stage today. This is my third Exponential Finance Congress, um, Conference, and I've gone from an audience member where I was shell-shocked, um, uh, engaged, every neuron in my body was just on fire from all the interesting things that I learned, um, to, to being one of uh, one a believer. Uh, some in the bank would call me a bet and an evangelist about the consumer of the future and the opportunities that we have ahead of us. Um, the, this also coincided with a very interesting time at Bank of America. A couple of years ago, we were just coming out of the financial crisis. We'd been focused on legacy issues. We'd been focused on regulatory uh, priorities. We'd been focused on compliance. And we had just started turning our attention to the future of the business, but doing so in a very traditional sort of way. Uh, a corporate strategy that looked three years out, out, amalgamated across all of our different lines of business, very incremental. And at the same time, I was going through a bunch of different pivots. In this same period, I've had three jobs. I ran the bank's strategic investing group. We were actively investing in fintech and regtech at the same time divesting portfolios that didn't comply with the Volcker Act. Uh, I moved to corporate strategy to help think about this consumer of the future, and now I'm leading a business um, that's taking that vision and putting it into action. But the story I'm here to tell is not my own. Um, it's personal nonetheless, um, and that's about this uh, amazing pace of change that we're all experiencing. Uh, it's not about the technologies, they're all fascinating, and we can have tr uh, sessions, many different sessions, to go deep on them. But what happens when all these exponentials collide? What is the consumer of the future going to do in their day-to-day -day life? And that's the place that Bank of America decided to start. We serve 47 million households today. And how is our customer going to live in the exponential future? So with that, um, we decided that uh, this is a very familiar graph. You've seen 18 versions of it, of it, I'm sure, today. What this means to me is the pace of customer change. We find them to be open, uh, adaptable, and very curious about what is going on when you have the combination of technology, uh, new value propositions, and solutions that are at your fingertips in a moment. At the same time, uh, we have companies that are looking to compete in a new way. Uh, this solution is what's allowed things like WeChat to go from zero to a billion customers in four years' time, or Instagram to go to less stellar growth of zero to only 500 million customers in uh, three years' time. But all of these companies didn't exist 10 or 15 years ago. What happens for the legacy companies? How do they compete in the future? And how do we bridge the gap between where we are and where our customers want us to be? Because we know that this isn't a challenge on both sides of the equation. It's a challenge for our customers, and it's a challenge for ourselves. So our solution was to look to the future. Um, but before we started that journey, Kind of, we took a, a ground view on, on who we are today, and uh, we looked at our purpose. And to say, could this actually help be our true north as we think about uh, competing in this accelerating time? And I just share this with you because we'll talk about some of these words on a going forward basis. But our purpose is to help uh, the financial lives of our customers uh, to make the, our financial lives better um, through the power of every connection. Um, and so the objective really is to deliver on our purpose through these changing markets. We then asked a very revolutionary question for ourselves, not one that we, can, that we have ever asked before. What if we weren't a bank? What if we didn't have any of our legacy products, services, mindsets, what if we didn't talk about credit cards, checking accounts, demand deposit accounts, 
or any of the 18,000 acronyms that we use to talk about our, pro our, our business? What would we want to know about our customer and how they live their lives in 10 or 15 years? Um, well, that's not something that a whole bunch of bankers can, can come up with. Um, so we needed to go out and seek some help to unshackle ourselves from our long, deep uh, history of, of solving things in increments. Um, so we, we took a, a variety of different tacks at this. The first thing uh, we did was there's a saying um, that the future is already here, it's just not evenly distributed. So we went on a global journey. Uh, we found companies like Tala, CrowdMed, and Rome. These are frontier businesses where customers in Africa and Asia and all over the world are using new business models, and we extrapolated and saw how customers today are living and using products and services like they will in the future. The second thing we did was we assembled a panel of experts, psychologists, behavioral economists, cybersecurity experts, no one in financial services, mind you, and we had them debate about what the future would look like. Now, everyone would have their own version of experts. You could find a better AR or VR expert. Or, you know, uh, we won't talk about who they were or what they said. But needless to say, it was the most stimulating interesting and engaging couple of days I have spent in my nearly three decades of, uh, in the professional workforce. Point number two. Then we gave them life maps. Um, because remember, we're not deciding what the future of a bank looks like. We're not trying to get to design the next best credit card. Um, we're trying to understand the life of our customer in the future. So we said, uh, these five areas where people spend most of their time during their day. What would be the nature of consumption? Are we even going to recognize what shopping looks like in the future? Is it an activity or does it just happen? Home life. Does the American dream exist in the future? Is it a house with a white picket fence, 2.2 kids and a dog? Or is it wherever your job is taking you? to Indonesia, London, and Des Moines. And what about health and well-being? We're all tracked everywhere we go. Are we healthier? Are we happier? What about our parents? What about our grandparents? And the question goes on. What about work? Do we work in a building? Do we work at home? How do we get to work in a self-driving car? And I won't even begin to get into identity and data. We'll touch on that later. But it was a fascinating framework that was meant to keep us on point, but it brought up all these really fascinating questions as we got to know the customer of the future. Um, and, and on and on we went. Ah, the last point I forgot to. Uh, so the fourth strategy that we used. We found global citizens, but they weren't any of us in the room. They live in my house. Uh, they are my children. They were 16 to 24. They lived in the US. They lived in India. They lived in China. They lived in Sweden. And we had them go through a whole series of exercises. And we asked them, what's the first thing in the mor that you do in the morning and the last thing you do at night? Anyone hazard a guess? They check Snapchat. Yep, no matter where you are, they all do the same thing. And if you have teenagers, you probably know that. Um, but you know, it's a very way. It's, it was a way to add uh, fidelity to our vision of that future customer um, and be able to design these solutions for them in the future. So, really interesting, fascinating, a view of the future and who this customer was. And then we learned a whole bunch about, I think maybe it's not learned, but validated all the things that we were talking about. We came up with um, kind of, I would say, 
go back here, four things that are we absolutely needed to be paying attention to today because they will change the world if they play out the way we think they are. The gig economy and sharing economy will transform our business and the way that we live our lives. Automated intelligence, or insisted intelligence and automation are already influencing who we are and how we make decisions. Uh, the, the third aspect was that anything that is a platform or can be a platform will become a platform. And the changing nature of work really is uh, the potential for unlocking amazing amounts of change. Underpinning these four major shifts were five immutable technologies, all the things that we were talking about over the course of this session. Pervasive commuting, computing, the fact that everything is connected. Uh, intelligence is uh, going to be, uh, we're going to need assisted decision making because of the explosion of data. And everything that, will be, that can become a platform will become a platform. And as we went through all this process, I will tell you we waxed and waned from utopic, a utopia view to dystopia view, but where we ultimately ended up with the conclusion that the opportunity absolutely exceeds the threat. Um, that there was a quote from uh, Kevin Kelly, who was one of our experts, um, that, was, that he said essentially, there was, there's never been a better time to be in business than there is today. Uh, and that um, it really isn't that uh, you need to be afraid of what's going on, but you need to understand it, plan for it, um, and start taking action today. You can't wait for, t wait for tomorrow. Um, and so his quote was, you're not late. Uh, this is the beginning of the beginning. So, with all that, we also realize that with all this potential for change, it will require a new way of doing business. The incremental approach to innovation for making the next best flavor of gum or cereal or the next best checking account actually isn't going to work in the future, in this potential exponential future. It requires us to think about our customer and our processes uh, in a very different way because, the, because of the nature of the change that we're facing ahead of us. What we used to compete on was the next best product, who had the best distribution, who had the, uh, the most number of manufacturing plants because assets were, were, were physical assets were what was driving um, success. But in the future, it will be about connections and your contributions to a network that will drive the competitive advantage in the future. Remember that our purpose is to make our customers' financial lives by the power of every connection. So the resonance of those words and the opportunities that we have ahead of us. So we go from a world of competing in, with scarce resources to one of competing in abundance. So what does that mean? How do you translate all of this into action? Uh, so we identified, we started with rather than build it and they will come, who is this customer and what are their unmet needs? How do we think about that? And we um, started with a 10-year view, and we, we wrote down every, question, every idea that we had around unmet needs. The amazing thing was the list was tremendous. Tens, hundreds of lists, Hen tens or hundreds of ideas. Some of them were straightforward. Others, totally wacky. But we took all of them and put them on the list. And then we organized them into categories. And then we said, well, how do we get from there to here? If that's 10 years or 15 years, what's seven 
What's five? What's three? What's one? And where do we start? Um, and so what you're going to start to see at Bank of America is a series of starts. I'm not going to help build two, three, four massive new products or new businesses. I'm going to start experimenting and iterating and introducing so that I can participate in this world of abundance. Um, some of them you will see. They'll be visible. We've talked about Erica and our artificial intelligence agent. But there'll be others that'll be just gradually introduced. And I'll talk about three of these opportunity areas ahead. So here we go. The first one. We talked about the changing nature of work. Uh, so in the future, call it 2025, 2030, um, I don't have one job. I don't have one profession. And I don't have one paycheck. So what do I do in terms of managing my income, my taxes, my planning for my next vacation? This, uh, there was a, a quote from Robin Chase, who's the founder of Zip Zipcar. And she said, my father had one job. I will have six jobs in my career. And my kids will have six jobs all at once. It creates this opportunity of, um, uh, to become an entrepreneur of one, to pursue your passion, to take off a year and go to Bali, or to take a job in San Francisco, or take a gig in San Francisco. So it unleashes tremendous opportunity, but it introduces uncertainty and complexity. And we do think that many people are dealing with this challenge already today. But how do we create a platform? How do we partner to enhance our services? How do we co-create um, new services that will help people manage and generate new income from their assets that are idle um, so that they can live uh, and maximize their financial lives going forward? So that's one opportunity area that we are currently exploring. This is, as I said, already a tremendous part of our current economy. Many people are in this workforce of their own choice or not. Um, and we feel like it is a underserved market that we need to actively um, support and contribute going forward. In the second area, we talked a little bit about artificial intelligence and the fact that it's already a presence in the marketplace today. We, uh, we can envision a future, into, again, where that artificial intelligence or that automated in agent um, needs to uh, travel with us into, this, uh, into the future shopping experience, whether that is us walking down the street uh, and we uh, go to make a purchase, but we don't have to take out our credit card because our body is our password, and we transact uh, with the environment in this persistent, persistent commu uh, computing environment. But how do we know if we should buy that? How do we know how we want to pay for it? And we need to have uh, the capability and the help with decision making on a going forward. That agent is going to have to give us contextually relevant advice when and where we need it in the physical and potentially in the virtual world. So we view that this uh, agent opportunity starts today, but we'll need to build and evolve uh, on a going forward basis. So this is the second area that we're exploring and the intersection of many of the technologies that we've heard about today, whether it's artificial intelligence, uh, AR, VR, all the digital technologies that we see today. And the third area, perhaps uh, um, one of the most powerful, uh, is this concept of, of identity. Um, in the increasingly digital world, every uh, interaction we have leads a footprint. 
It leaves a footprint of who we are and what we do. Um, and that is being captured in different ways by different parties. What if there was a way to be able to capture, manage, protect, improve, trade, monetize um, the, what will be essentially one of your most important assets, and that's your digital identity. What happens when that digital identity is compromised? How do you understand where all of your information is? And how do you make sure that you can protect it adequately? And do I have one identity? There's my identity at work. There's my identity at home. There's my identity with my spouse. There's my identity. And is there such thing as privacy in the future? There are really some profound questions um, as we start thinking about the identity opportunity, the, ide the information that we have today as a bank, where we can partner to drive forward this, this opportunity and uh, what that would mean for the future. All of these areas are tremendous. Uh, these are visions of the future. Uh, and what you will see, as I say, are starting points that will lead us somewhere in this direction. What I am most excited about is that we've started the journey. Uh, and we won't, do, we won't go it alone. And, and that uh, we're sharing this with a broader sense, a broader community. There's never been a more exciting time to be in business. We, back to the Kevin Kelly's point, this, you know, you're not too late, it's the beginning of the beginning. It's up to people like the people in the room to not only um, uh, participate in the future, but to drive it. And we at Bank of America are so excited um, that we are starting this journey together. So, welcome to the beginning. Thank you. <laughs>